So before we get into any of the rest of the news, Dave, how did Nick Wayne do tonight? He lost. Um, well. The crowd was really into him. Um, they showed his mom over and over again, almost like it was building to an angle or something. Um, you know, swerve like mouthed off to her, but they kept showing her face. Um, he got over really big with the crowd. I mean, like definitely the ringsiders were, were chanting for him. Um, they did a video early in the show on him that was really good. Um, you know, made you really want to like him. So that was really cool. And he got in there and he did some cool stuff. Um, I don't think they had a great match, but the, the crowd was, um, it was a good match. But the crowd was very into it. You know, they were very into wanting him to win. And then he lost. It would not have been my call for him to lose his debut. Um, I'm, you know, I mean, even though, I mean, Swerve was more polished and all that, but I would have, the crowd really wanted him to win. And, um, you know, he did a thing. Um, there were a couple times where they had gimmicks, shows an experience who played the crowd and then Swerve would get him from behind. And then the finish was uh, Swerve, um, he was he was climbing the top rope to basically do a top rope Hurricane Rana, Frankensteiner. And Swerve turned it into a power bomb, and then used the JML driver. Um, There's actually a move in between, but used the JML driver to beat him. And um, he did do his Wayne's World move, and Swerve got his foot on the ropes. But the move was like the people don't really know the move, so it was probably would have been a way more exciting near fall, like if it was in Defy or in GCW where they know the move. But it 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 was good. It was good. I mean, overall. Um, he got over really big, you know, and I mean, that's all you could really ask for. And, um, I mean, it was something to watch it, you know, I mean, it's funny because I, you know, I never really thought about, you know, like, obviously I grew up with his grandfather and, um, that's right. Yeah. I grew up with his grandfather and his father and his grandfather were subscribers for, you know, decades, um, of the observer. I mean, um, I mean, you know, Ed, I, you know, would have been because he knew me, but Buddy... This is Moondog um, Ed Moretti, yes. Moondog Ed Moretti, Ed Giovanetti, yeah, who I... You know, he's a couple years older than me, um, but when I first started going to wrestling, I mean, he was at the same match as I was for, you know, 10 years throughout the 70s before he, you know, ended up becoming a pro wrestler. He's a big, big fan of, um, of Moondog Maine, obviously. And then, um, you know, and then uh, Buddy... Um, you know, subscribe for forever and ever. He was one of the one of the earlier wrestlers to subscribe, so it was kind of neat watching you know all that unfold and everything. But I mean, look, the guys, the guy has got a great future. Um, it's just hard because you know debuting in an AEW. I mean, he he'd be someone where you'd want to debut in like a local promotion for a couple of years, and then you know, and I guess he did. I guess he did. He has wrestled in. In Japan. Dude, he's been everywhere. He's been. I mean, he has been all over, over the been, world. He's, yeah, he's been all over the world for two years. Yeah, yeah. And virtually and, every weekend, like like one or two shows every weekend over the last year or so. Yeah. I mean, he's got he's, he's got a lot. so much ring time in the last couple of years. It, it's actually, you know, it's pretty incredible. I mean. You know, most people, when they're coming up, age 16, 17, 18, I mean, oh, even if they are wrestling, they're wrestling just your local show against local guys and whatever. Right, right, I right. I mean, he's out there with Will Ospreay and Kenta and Swerve. And, he's I mean, the... I think Bandito, he had a match with Bandito. And, you know, you could go on and on. Just these great, great, great workers. He's had a two-year period that some people never have in their career. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, as far as like experience, people want him to do well. I mean, that's the one thing. I mean, that's the, and I think that was the key watching the show, is that you know you're in Saskatoon. It's not exactly, um, you know, the place like where you'd say you'd have like a lot of, um, you know, hardcore wrestling fans and everything. Although the front, I mean, front row in any market's going to be hardcore wrestling fans. But um, he got the people to like him. But they did push it really hard. You know, I mean, they pushed him for a couple of weeks too. It's not like they just threw him out there cold. So, I mean, I would say it was um, it was a success. Um, like I said, I would have not done the finish that they did, but you know, I mean, I I think it's one of those things where they don't want to put him over too early. Um, you know, in another era, I would have been a lot more. You know, when when wins and losses actually mattered. But in AEW, they're supposed to matter. And to, it's funny when Tony Schiavone. Uh, right when the match was over, Tony Schiavone goes, you know, wins and losses matter, but he did really good, you know, even though he lost. And, you know, I, you know, when you have a big publicized debut, um, 
you know, I know that they want to protect Swerve and Swerve's, you know, again, more, you know, more polished and, and um, everything. But he could still, I would have put him over, you know, and um, they use Darby. They, they basically are putting him in there as like uh, Darby's protege. Darby was out there cheering him on. You know, he would he sold most of the early part of the match. And then Darby came out. Then he did the, um, uh, what was it, like the uh, avalanche uh, poison Rana off the ropes. And then he followed with the Wayne's World, which was like his big... You know, the two big spots that, and, and, you know, like it got over really big, you know, I mean, the people were definitely with the match. So it was, uh, it was a success, you know, as far as, um, the live crowd went. Yeah. And, uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we're going to, we're going to review, well, you'll review the show later, but the other big news coming out of the show was the, uh, reveal of the fifth men for both, uh, teams in blood and guts and, uh, the Blackpool combat club, their fifth man is Pac. And as uh, pretty much, I guess you could kind of say expected, or at least uh, we figured there was a very good chance of this. Kota Bushi is the fifth man on the elite team. That, so, got, a huge, uh, that got a huge pop in the building. I can imagine. I can yeah, imagine. it's funny because he's never been in AEW, but I mean, that got a huge pop. And um, yeah, the golden elite. Um, look, I mean... It's a war games match. War games matches are almost always really good. And, you know, this has got, I mean, if you're talking about super talent war games, I mean, look at the talent in this thing. I mean, you know, it always hurts losing Brian Danielson, but Pac is, uh, you know, it's a, he's a different dimension than Brian Danielson, but he's a fantastic wrestler himself. And you got Moxley, who's suited for this, Claudio, who's great, Wheeler, who's really good um, and getting better, and um, Takeshita, who's you know, really one of the best in the world. Omega, who's one, who's maybe, you know, the best, if not the second best big match wrestler in the entire business. And then, uh, you know, the Young Bucks, enough to be said. Adam Page is great in big matches. And then Kota Ibushi in his AEW debut. It's, uh, I mean, as far as a match goes, as far as the promise of a match goes, um, it, it could really be one of the best matches of the year. It really could. I mean, it's. I think the expectations are really, really high on that one. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.